Next topic we're going to look at is the possibility of postural hypertension. So we're considering complications of immobility on the cardiovascular system. We've considered deep venous thrombosis. We've considered pulmonary emboli. Now we're going to consider postural hypertension. Now hypotension means low blood pressure. Hypo, low, tension to do with blood pressure. And it's hypotension which depends on the posture of the patient. So in postural hypertension, you've probably experienced this yourself if you've been lying down and all of a sudden you jump up, you go dizzy for a while. Maybe only for 10 seconds or so, but you feel a bit dizzy when you jump up. And the reason for that is that <clears throat> the, your blood pressure has been a, lower when you're lying down. Then when you jump up, your brain's uphill from your heart and the heart has to start working harder and there has to be peripheral vasoconstriction to increase the blood pressure so your brain is properly perfused. And the reason you go dizzy is because there's not enough blood going to your brain and you can feel that in your, in your head. That makes you feel dizzy. Quite a nasty feeling, actually. Normally, uh, when I get it, I lie down again until it passes off. So postural hypertension, low blood pressure as a result of the position you've been in. Now, when you jumped up onto your feet, you've probably only been lying down for half an hour. But if you've been lying down for a long period of time, then it would take much longer for your blood pressure to get going again so that you don't feel dizzy when you're sit sitting up again. So patients that have been immobile for a while can actually feel quite dizzy just when they sit up, never mind when they stand up. And we have to get them used to this gradually again so that they can build up the blood pressure. So we're thinking about postural hypotension. Due to decreased effect of gravity on the patient's extremities, one cause anyway, that means they get vasodilation, which reduces the blood pressure which is okay when they're lying down, but the blood pressure is then no longer enough to perfuse their brain when they're upright. So when the patient first sits up or changes from the horizontal to the vertical position, it results in a hypoperfusion of the brain, which may cause dizziness and may cause nausea. Now, as well as the peripheral vasodilation, there's probably loss of muscle tone in the arterial system. So when we sit up, normally we have arterial vasoconstriction, which, Im which increases the blood pressure. But if someone's been lying down for a long period of time, this muscle tone in the arterial system is probably lost. Therefore, the arterioles can't respond, they can't contract to increase the blood pressure. And the effect seems to be worse when patients are sat up passively by you rather than sitting themselves up using their active muscular system. So postural hypertension. Let's think about how we're going to prevent this. So if possible, we can allow the patient to uh, be propped up by pillows so they're not lying flat for much of the time. It's a good idea not to lie your patients flat unless you have to. Allow the patients to become upright as regularly as possible. And get up slowly in several stages allow them to get up slowly. So don't take them from lying flat to sitting up straight away. Allow them to get up on their own in stages. And in fact, this is a good idea with anyone who's been ill or in bed or even some old people. When you're getting them out of bed, just give them a minute to sit on the edge of the bed before you get them up. Then it gives them time to increase the heart rate time for peripheral vasoconstriction to occur to get the blood pressure up a bit. But in patients that have been immobilised for a long period of time, that's going to take hours to maybe even a day or so to get them up, not just minutes as it does in our case, when, you, when you've been immobile for a short period of time. And of course, this can be prevented by minimising the period that the patient is immobile for. This is true with all these complications. The less time the patient is immobile, the less of these complications are going to occur and the less severe these complications will be. So postural hypertension. The next complication we're going to look at is possible increased cardiac workload. Now cardiac workload may increase when patients are lying flat. It shouldn't uh, occur otherwise because when the patients are lying flat the distribution of the circulating blood changes. 
So in mobile patients that are lying flat, the distribution of the blood changes. And the way it changes is that some of the blood supply that would normally be in the legs moves to the thorax. 11% of legs blood supply moves to the thorax. This is when patients are lying flat. In other words, venous return from the legs is increased. That's really what I'm saying. Therefore, venous return to the heart is increased because there's more venous blood in the thorax. And if more blood goes back to the heart, the heart is then obliged by the frank starling reflex to pump more blood out. So increasing cardiac workload when the patient is lying flat. So keep patients sat up as much as possible. Now, uh, immobility causes an increase in heart rate and as we've said, this is because the circulatory system is working less efficiently. It's the exact opposite of someone who's athletically fit when the heart rate slows down. So in deconditioning, due to immobility, there's an increase in heart rate. And subsequent exercise will increase the tachycardia because the patients are very unfit. Therefore, any effort is going to cause a tachycardia. In other words, there's a deconditioning, there's a loss of endurance which may take some time to recover from. So let's just review what we've said there to clarify it. There's an increase in cardiac workload when the patients are lying flat because there's an increase in venous return. That's one point. The other point is when patients are immobile, they become unfit. Therefore, the heart has to work quicker because it's working less efficiently and the circulatory system is less efficiently, working less efficiently. So heart rate has to increase as opposed to when someone is fit, when heart rate decreases. So there's an increase in heart rate. And then when the person does exercise, because they've become so unfit, the heart rate increases fairly significantly to facilitate that exercise because the circulatory system is working inefficiently. Let's think about the prevention now of these complications. Well, obviously, as we've said, Limit the time of immobility as much as possible. Do not immobilize your patients unless you have got a good rationale for doing so. However, if someone has been immobilized for some period of time, they need gradual progressive rehabilitation so that they can regain their fitness. Just like if you want to start running marathons or doing a lot of strenuous exercise, you've got to build up to fitness over a period of time. And it's the same with patients who have been immobilised. To return to a normal level of fitness, it takes time of, to, to, to progressively rehabilitate them. So it's a good idea just to keep an eye on pulse rate and blood pressure during times of immobility and as the patients start to recover to regain their fitness.